We're going to have a budget hearing now. Take a roll call, please. Councilor Cameron. Present. Councilor Connell. Present. Councilor Cronin. Present. Councilor Eigerman. Here. Councilor Junta. Present. Councilor Hartquist. Present. Councilor Hearsock. Here. Councilor Kinsey. Here. Councilor Tontar. Here. Councilor Vogel. Here. Council President O'Brien. Here. Let me read the notice. The notice for this uh, hearing states a city council hearing on the operating budget. This is pursuant to the new charter. Notice is given pursuant to the Home Rule Charter Section 6-4 that the New Report City Council will hold a public hearing on Monday, June 9th at 7.30 in this chamber uh, as part of the City Council meeting on the same day. The purpose of the public hearing is to hear testimony and comment from interested persons relative to the proposed FY 2015 operating budget as submitted by the Mayor to the Council. Budgets available for inspection uh, by the public during regular operating hours of the City Clerk's Office. And it is posted on the city website homepage. That's the homepage. Did anyone wish to speak on the budget? Any from the public like to speak on the budget? Um, it's on the budget now. What's on the agenda? It's the budget. Okay, next. Anyone else like to speak? Do not close that hearing then. Hearing closed. Move on to the City Council meeting of June 9, 2014. Please rise. Moment of silence tonight for Richard Marx, who died this past week. His wife, Lynn, works in the library for many, many years. So, a moment of silence for Richard. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Request to the roll call for June 9, 2014. Councilor Cameron. Present. Councilor Connor. Present. Councilor Cronin. Present. Councilor Eigen. Here. Councilor Junta. Present. Councilor Harquist. Present. Councilor Hearsog. Here. Councilor Kinsey. Here. Councilor Tontar. Present. Councilor Vogel. Go ahead. Council President O'Brien. Here. We have a quorum. All are present. Late file items. There are two late file items. Uh, the councils will see on their desk the mayor's the communication number four. And there's a Jeannie Geiger Crisis Center communication with respect to the 23rd annual walk to be held October 5th, 2014. What is the of the council? Motion to waive the rules so these late file items may be accepted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Public comment? Any? Now you can. Hi, I'm Jenny Aramo. Is this? No, we don't need this. Uh, I'm at 28R Toppins Lane. I am here to ask for your support for the funding for repairs to the New Report Skate Park. Uh, the skate park is going to see a closure this summer for almost the entirety of a seven week period due to renovations at the Knock Mullen School. So there's a safety issue in keeping that park operative while kids are there during the construction that's happening daily. So while the park is closed, we'd like to uh, um, do some very, um, invasive repairs to the park that are really overdue and it's really regarding safety. It's a concrete park. It was built with community funds that were raised privately um, back in 2001. Over $200,000 was raised, the labor was donated, it was gifted to the city. Uh, I'm a member of Friends of the New Report Skate Park which um, just creates a little bit of oversight to make sure that it's a healthy environment and a safe environment. So there's about $8,800 in repairs needed the Friends of New Report Skate Park are kicking in 2000 and we're asking the city to absorb the rest of that cost so that when it reopens, there's a safe environment for the kids to enjoy. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Callahan. Hello, Brian Callahan, 29 Warren Street. Uh, I'll second everything Mr. Ramos said. And I had sent an email to the council imploring you to not have this go to committee first. It was just voted in. Um, since the park closes on July 7th, we need to have the contractor in there that week, which means we need to get the money secured, sign the contract, and just go. So if you can vote that in, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Norm Hansen. Norm Hansen, I'm representing Belleville Church for the CPA grant. I have four colleagues with us, Hans Erwich, my wife Jean, and Dr. Hersink, as I see, he just came, come in. We're asking for money for our historic church. It's almost 200 years old. I think it qualifies. Um, we had, obviously we have trouble maintaining that building and we have, that's why we're asking for money to help support the outside of the meeting house, the, two, the three sides. Uh, since the CPA has cut our request um, in half, uh, we're gonna do half of the job if we get that money and we're encouraging them. Uh, yes, we are a church, we're an active church, but we also serve the community in a number of ways. And it's on that basis we are asking for your help. If you have any questions, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Kelly, Two Harris Street. I'm with the uh, Jeannie Geiger Crisis Center. That's why I didn't we're asking, try to pronounce it. So. I'm sorry? That's why I didn't try to pronounce your name. I, I know. <laughs> that always happens. <laughs> um, I'm with the Jeannie Geiger Crisis Center, and we're asking permission for our 23rd annual Walk Against Domestic Violence to happen on Sunday, um, October 5th. And we're um, asking for a new route, which is at Waterfront Park, um, which is actually a route that we had about 15 years ago. Um, to increase awareness and visibility uh, since um, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Happy to answer any questions about the route. Thanks. Thank you. May I ask comment? Good evening, uh, President O'Brien, members of the City Council. It's a pleasure to be here tonight to give you an update. Since my last time before the Council, I would first like to recognize Chief Chris LeClaire for his um, event that he held on Sunday to honor uh, firefighters, Fire, Firefighter Sunday, where we recognize firefighters who have been lost in the line of duty as well as any of our own who have passed since uh, during that course year. It was a, a nice event and I thank you the counselors who, who joined in the event. I have good news uh, to report about Plum Island Water and Sewer. As you know, uh, we have been working for uh, 18 months uh, with the state and with DEP on trying to move this process forward to begin a protocol that would allow us to begin repairs on Plum Island. After a series of uh, many, many meetings uh, at the Attorney General's office as well as with DEP, we are about 90, 95% there in terms of the protocol. We anticipate if a contractor is hired as anticipated that we will be put sh putting shovels in the ground on July 7th to begin repair of 32 out of the 147 fire hydrants. At the same time, while we are doing the repair to the fire hydrants, we will be doing broader excavation and taking samples from the water and sewer system as, um, and replacing anything that is um, severely corroded at that time. Uh, we'll be testing ground soil as well as um, soils as well as groundwater and we will uh, pick 32 sites at different elevations throughout the island in hopes of being able to have some type of sense of what the conditions are in other parts of the system throughout the island. I'm uh, tentatively scheduled a public meeting on Plum Island on June 25th at Pitta Hall. Hopefully we can make that happen to begin to work with the residents uh, and their ward counselor out on the island in terms of you know, the uh, work that needs to happen. We cannot lose another construction season there. 
In terms of the Waterfront Trust, we are continuing to meet the City Planning Office, Waterfront Trust, the Chair of the NRA, uh, to advance the um, new survey and the, the land conveyances there. Um, I also wanted to let you know that, uh, again, I am hoping that you will be able to move on uh, Mr. Ulig's uh, appointment as an urban designer for, uh, landscape designer for the one of the vacant seats on the NRA. I also forwarded today the uh, letter of interest and resume of Andy Sifford who, uh, to the governor for the governor's appointment for that seat. I also recognize that uh, counselors as well as I think the planning office and myself were disappointed in um, our ability to really dialogue during that first meeting we had in early February with counselors, planning, and NRA, and would like to reschedule that in uh, July so that we can you know, move from just people standing up and talking about what they heard during their campaigns to actually talking about where we were with the charrette and what our next steps as we go forward addressing environmental, financial, expanded park, uh, location of the visitor and senior community center. Uh, I know some of you have been participating in the uh, new group, Merrimack Valley Coastal Adaptation Work Group, or Storm Surge, who has been bringing in very high quality scientists who have been uh, preparing lectures for the community regarding our preparedness as we move forward and plan about planning uh, for protecting our coastline. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet with uh, representatives from this group as well as bioengineering who is one of the leaders in this initiative and uh, we will continue to move forward to work with them on these issues. Uh, you have a transfer before you uh, for $35,000. Uh, we have an earmark in the state FY15 budget for our 250th anniversary. We don't anticipate that money will drop until November, so I'm asking for us to set up an account with our free cash and then replenish those funds once the state funding drops. Uh, we're starting uh, plans for a big birthday party celebration out on Plum Island on uh, August 10th, a uh, big clam bake, as well as a series of scavenger hunts, a flag contest, uh, period costume ball, and a series of other events that will uh, celebrate our 250th. Um, I think you are aware of from the public comments and my comment to you, my uh, update to you regarding what's going on with the skate park. It's closed now for seven weeks. Uh, I think this makes sense at this point. Again, this is a, another asset to the city. We have uh, many, many kids and adults who use this, this park and it really does need to be repaired. And again, uh, as you heard uh, Jenny Ramos say, this was uh, created with uh, totally donations from the city and I'm asking you to, for $6,800 to do these repairs and the Friends of the Skate Park are putting up $2,000 and we need to move forward on this so that we can get the work done before uh, the park could potentially open again in September. Uh, in addition to that, there is a transfer for $774. Youth Services is covering half of that so that we can create a temporary skate park on the tennis courts on the grounds of Knock Mullen. These temporary structures will be reused with youth services over at the Brown School when they relocate to that area. You also have a comprehensive memo in your packet this uh, tonight for the capital needs of water and sewer and those accounts that are no longer in need and those funds being transferred to help us meet the gap for the new uh, DPS build, building. Uh, one of the uh, orders that is before you is we had a vote of the school building committee a um, couple weeks ago where we have a balance of approximately three million dollars in that school project which is a really good thing and we really um, have a lot of uh, support in the community, as you know, for field space. We uh, have not been able to fix or have the funds as of yet to fix and replace the ball field that we displaced at the Bresnahan School. And the school committee, school building committee voted to allocate $1 million towards repairing the Fuller Field as well as building a new baseball field at Knock Mullen. Uh, we just received a uh, redesign from the Hunter Group and that's up on the city um, Global Share website, which we will make available to you. I believe uh, Peter Lombardi sent you at least pieces of that presentation, and I assume that will go to committee and that you will have an opportunity to um, look in more detail about that. Um, 
What needs to happen, though, is we, I tried to work with Bond Council to um, convince them that there was a direct nexus between the original vote and being able to create the baseball field, and they said absolutely not. That because it was a vote that was specific for a debt exclusion for the uh, school project, that we would have to go out for another vote. And this is not an override, it's not a debt exclusion, it's not including increasing taxes. All it is is asking voters of our community, can we take money that you approved for this project that's in surplus and can we move it over to a new project? <coughs> so we're trying to figure out whether or not we can do a separate ballot in November or if we have to do a special election. And we will um, continue, uh, Rich Jones will continue to work with the uh, state elections on, on that process. I think this is an opportunity that will finally take care of all of our school field needs and would encourage your support on that. I wanted to thank you for um, all of your diligent work on the budget and I would also again like to thank Ethan Manning and Peter Lombardi for um, their great work in assembling the, the document that you have been reviewing. In um, the budget update, you had asked for a clarification of school funding in terms of there were sort of numbers that were out all over the place. Uh, basically what had happened is as we went and reviewed, you'll see more detail in my update, went back to uh, review once we understood how serious the structural deficit was in the school budget, we went back and took a look at all the department line item requests. From there we were able to pull out uh, approximately $155,000. We also build our revenue on a very conservative base, so we were able to go back and take a look at some of our revenues, and then some of the surplus that was in our 32B account, and through all of those accounts, we were able to shift over um, the little over a million dollars that the school needed. Now that was an 8.25 increase from the city side, but because several of those accounts were in deficit, we had to cover those deficit accounts. And so that took a small percentage off the top of the 8.25%, and that's when we were left with the 6.25%, uh, which is the total school funding for this year. I hope we, hopefully that makes, makes sense to you in terms of understanding how that school funding um, was determined. Any questions about that? All right, so before I sit down, I would like to ask your permission Mr. Squillis, will you come up here, please? Some of you may or may not know that uh, uh, Mr. Squillis is retiring, and he has been our auditor and recently uh, finance director for uh, the past year, according to the new charter. And he has done an amazing job in managing our city finances. And so, in honor of his last budget for the city, I would like to offer this proclamation. <laughs> Whereas, graduating from Gloucester High School in 1966 as senior <laughs> class president, you can talk to Lois, she wrote this. A senior class president, Bill, was also a commanding officer for ROTC and played varsity football and basketball. And whereas, following high school, Bill received a full scholarship to Northeastern University, mm -hmm. receiving his Bachelor of Science degree in 1970, continuing his education with graduate studies in public administration from Georgetown University, <laughs> Bill then received his Master of Arts degree in public administration from the University of Northern Colorado. And whereas, as Division Chief for the City of Alexandria, Virginia, Bill managed the Human Service Program for 125,000 residents, offering community education and fee classes, recreation, cultural activities, after-school daycare, special programs for the physically and mentally challenged, just to name a few. Settling in New England, Bill opened and operated three businesses involved in the selling of home furnishings, antiques, fine art, which later became his true passion. And whereas a career path leading him into municipal employment, Bill became the purchasing agent for the city of Gloucester, then advancing to CAO and assistant to the mayor. In 1988, Mr. Squillis was elected as the mayor of Gloucester with 58% of the vote and re-elected with 61% of the vote. 
He left this position to become the assistant state treasurer for Massachusetts. And whereas in 2002, our city hired Bill as auditor, and in 2013, he became the city's first finance director and auditor. Garnering respect from his coworkers and the business community, Bill served in this role with remarkable business acumen, professionalism, always with a smile. Newburyport was better served. Never. Was better served because of Bill's tenure here. And whereas the city of Newburyport expresses its gratitude and appreciation to Bill Squillis for his 12 years of dedication and commitment to the city of Newburyport and wishes him the very best in his retirement. Therefore, be it proclaimed Tuesday, June 10th, 2014, as Bill Squillis Day in the city of Newburyport, <laughs> given under my hand and seal this ninth day of June in the year 2014, Donna D. Holiday, Mayor. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, now I don't have to write an obituary. <laughs> um, words are not enough to express uh, my gratitude to the people of Newburyport, and to Mayor Holiday, and to all the people that I've worked with, particularly my staff, Kathy Leo, Barbara Nealon, uh, Ethan Manning, uh, who's going to be the new finance director, uh, Rosemary Colum. Uh, and so many people through the years. Uh, Tom, we've been here since the beginning. You've been here. A couple of years, yes. A couple of years. <laughs> and, uh, and it's just been a, a pleasure and an honor to have spent the last 12 years of my professional career, 43 years, uh, here in Newburyport. It did mention that I played uh, uh, bas varsity uh, football. And one of my last games was here in Newburyport. Uh, it happens to be a picture in my yearbook uh, of me getting cut down like a, like a totem pole. Uh, and I have that as a very fond memory, but, uh, but so many fond memories of, in Newburyport that I will uh, remain in my heart forever. And, uh, and it is a dear, wonderful city with so many wonderful people. And thank you so much for this. I appreciate it. Consent agenda. The consent agenda this evening will consist of the approval of the minutes for the May 27th meeting. And there are eight transfers, three of which have been removed. The first transfer is um, Mayor Free Cash 35000 to Anniversary Celebrations, same amount to uh, Budget and Finance. Transfers 2, 4, and 5 have been removed at the request of Councilor Herzog. Uh, transfer three, police department salary officers 21,000 to purchase cruisers 15,000, maintenance equipment 6,000, miscellaneous 4A. Uh, transfer number six, DPS sewer retained earnings 400,000 to meter replacement 50,000, West End easement 150,000, vacuum truck purchase 200,000. Transfer seven, DPS water retained earnings 250,000 to meter replacement 50,000. Um, water main replacement, 200,000. And last, transfer number A, DPS water and sewer. Water tank maintenance, 192,074. Uh, CIP network expansion, 30,000. To water retained earnings, 14,000. To ProLane pump station, 10,008. Sewer CIP flood study, 41,182. Sewer replacement generators, 63,101. To sewer retained earnings, 91,000. To DPS building project, 443,000. There are three communications. Third annual cruising event, the 50s event, that has already previously been approved for August 14th, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. They are asking to expand it by including uh, the State Street parking lot and a couple of other streets. That's to be referred to public safety. 
The second communication is a block party approval, Ting Monroe Street to Merrimack Street, <coughs> lot June 19th. That's approved. And the third communication is a frame, a frame sign request on In Street near, near the fountain to Pandora's Box, for Pandora's Box. License and permits. And that is the consent agenda as amended. Any wish to take anything else out? What is the wish of the council? Motion to approve as amended. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Move on to the regular agenda. Communications? Communication or transfer? Transfers, I'm sorry. <coughs> transfer number two. Uh, Mayor's Department Insurance 32B 18520 to Kelly School Expenses 9946 Facility Repairs 6008 and Vehicle Equipment Purchase. $1,774. I move to approve this. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number four. Transfer number four is emergency management, building maintenance, $400 to emergency management deputy coordinator, same amount. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Councilor Herzog? Thank you, Mr. President. Just for this and the next transfer I've removed from the consent agenda, we're talking about four or $500. I don't think it's worthwhile to send it to committee. It's an interdepartmental transfer. I suggest we approve this tonight. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Transfer five. Assessors reserve for appropriation, $550, two other supplies, same amount. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Communications? First communication is the mayor's update, a late file. Motion to receive and file. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 In discussion? Sorry. Council Bogle. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I was um, going to make a motion that um, this be. Um, sent to uh, general government. The mayor is gracious enough to um, put together the um, uh, offer to reconvene the meeting uh, that we didn't go so well, if we want to put it that way, um, in February. And the idea is that um, through the general government committee, we could work with the mayor to make sure that the communication and the method of uh, setting up the meeting uh, works well for everybody. So I was asking that it be sent to um, I'd, I'd remove my motion receiving file for the purpose of discussion. Any further discussion? We need a second on that motion. Yeah, so there, there's been a motion made to refer to general government? Yes. No, I'll second that. Has the second <coughs> been removed? Second removed. Okay. Thank you. Thank second. You. Second to that motion. Discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Communication five. That's the letter uh, to you, Mr. President, uh, from uh, Suzanne Dubas regarding the uh, Jeannie Geiger Crisis Center walk, which is scheduled for October 5th, Waterfront Park. It's the 23rd annual. Uh, it would be situated directly behind the Firehouse Theater, located at One Market Square. Registration beginning at 8 o'clock until noon. Would you like me to read the entire thing? Motion referred to uh, public safety. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Both? Move on to appointments. Table appointments. First table appointment is Robert Ulig, 10 Ocean Avenue, New Report Redevelopment Authority. Motion to remove from the table. Second. Any discussion? Remove from the table. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion to. Um, Postpone the um, uh, reading of the second uh, the second reading. Oh, I'm sorry. Where are we here? This is the first. We're coming out going to the I think, second. I think you want to do a motion to postpone to a yes, certain I date. Yes, I I'd like to mo make a motion to postpone the um, until the Jan Jul July 14th City Council meeting. Second. Discussion. Council Thank Vogel. Thank you. Um, some of you may have heard this before, so it's going to be redundant for the many of you, I guess. Uh, 
I started out last time when we had the committee meeting saying that if we don't know where we're going, how are we going to know when we get there? And there's been a lot of effort made to um, get consensus through the charrette, through certainly all of our discussions with the community. And before we move forward on, on, on Mr. Ulick, I think it would be very, very appropriate to have this meeting that we are going to, that we didn't have, and I'd like to have that meeting and see that we can pull together some consensus with this group, certainly with the um, <coughs> NRA, with the um, uh, city, you know, with the uh, mayor and with the planning department. We could invite Bob to the meeting. He certainly is a, would be appropriate for him to be there. And put down the items that we need to discuss. I get asked a minimum of five times a day what's happening with the waterfront and I do not have an answer. It would be really nice to be able to put together a list of where we are and where we're going. We need to talk about, as the mayor pointed out, we need to talk about DEP, we need to talk about um, funding, we need to talk about all kinds of things, and we need to pull together the consensus from the charrette, and we need to be able to pull it on the table, we need to be able to talk about it, then we need to move forward. And I think that we're sort of tilting at, at windmills, if you will, be, by, by doing these things out of order. We have lots of things to do. I don't see any rush. I see methodicalness being the order of the day. And if that makes any sense, I would appreciate your vote. If it doesn't make any sense, I certainly understand. Any further discussion? Councilor Cameron. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm opposed to this motion to postpone this. Um, and here are the reasons why I think we should vote this up or down for this appointment. Um, reason one, and actually it's a fairly small reason uh, in, in my rationale, is the, the NRA will not have a quorum for their meeting this month. Our most recent appointee, Leslie Eckhold, will be out of the country. Um, and if, if there's no appointment here, uh, they won't have a quorum. Um, I know there's been various discussion over the last few months with the resignations about whether to even have an NRA. I think um, many people who are uh, in favor of the NRA plan from last year, two years ago, and some people who were opposed to that, I, those ideas um, think we should continue to have an NRA and I think we need um, a, you know, a, a fully functioning uh, board for them to be a part of the discussion about whether to have them in the first place. As to kind of lining up our ducks in a row and getting um, this in a methodical uh, way as the counselor suggests, um, I, I'm certainly in agreement with that. I think having uh, Mr. Uh, Ulig on the, on the NRA is furthering those goals. I think the consensus that was achieved in the charrette, to my mind, and, and checking in with various people, um, seems to be much more park, much less parking, and some sort of a visitor center, some people wanting the current site of the, those bathrooms, some people wanting the Mike sub shop idea. I think that's the consensus. Um, and I think Mr. Oleg would not be substituting his judgment for the collaborativeness of the community. I think if you reread his letter from May 4th, which I did earlier tonight, um, you'll find that there's a spirit of collaboration within that. Um, the man certainly has a lot of experience um, working as part of the Parks Commission, and he could bring that expertise to something that is very, very, very important to us. I don't see why we should delay this any further and, and put him on uh, this authority um, and, and have him help us move ahead. My understanding from discussions with the mayor that there will be another group pulled together that could include uh, council input for sure, but could also include COW as we move forward on the consensus that, that we uh, saw in the charrette. Um, and the last thing I want to mention, uh, several people have said that uh, Mr. Oleg is already on several boards and it's my understanding that he would be stepping down uh, in due course as chair of the Parks Commission to fully uh, put the effort in with the NRA. So I think, uh, you know, wherever you, you are on this issue, I think he's somebody that can help us move forward in a collaborative manner. Thank you. Councilor Kinsey. Thank you, Council President. Um, I, I'm in agreement with Councilor uh, Cameron in that, not that I, I'm not in agreement with Councilor Vogel's intent. I am in agreement with the intent um, behind having a fuller picture behind what we're doing and where we're going with the, uh, with the NRA. But I think it's the timing. Uh, I voted in Leslie um, Eckholt to the position, but uh, if this were brought up before 
her, uh, her appointment going to vote, I think I've been more in agreement with the intent behind seeing a whole picture of the NRA and where we're going with it. So I too want to see uh, a, another um, appointee placed. I think we're going to have um, a really uh, very thick resume in, in Robert Ulig's appointment, and I think we can all benefit from that as a city. Thank you, sir. Any further discussion? Councilor Cronin. Yeah, I'm, I'm rising in support of Councilor Vogel, um, and the, the only reason I am at this point is that, um, yes, there isn't a quorum um, for another month. Well, there hasn't been a quorum for several months. There's no rush. Um, I would certainly like to get a clearer picture, a clearer definition of what's going on. Um, we in this body have little um, sway over, over the NRA. This is one of those things that we do have considerable weight over. Um, I'm not going to comment on the candidate at, at, this, at this point because uh, hopefully this may be pushed off until after we have a meeting. Um, if that's the case, I think that's all well and good. Um, but for right now, I really do think we should be in the planning stages and actually the lack of quorum with somebody being um, out of the country is a good thing for us. We can slow this down and try to, try to do the right thing and get everybody in the room and talk to each other. So I would be supportive of Councilor Bogle. Any further discussion? Councilor Uh I'm rising in opposition to the motion. Um, I shared with Councilor Vogel the frustration that we didn't have a follow-on meeting from the original roundtable. And uh, I, I was heartened to see the mayor indicate that she's going to try and schedule something in early July. In the absence of that, I would have supported his motion. But I'm confident that we're going to have that meeting now. And I, don't, I personally don't see the point in holding back uh, Bob Uly's appointment, because I think he's going to help our discussions. I, I heard what Councillor Vogel said, which is that we could invite uh, Mr. Mr. Ulig, uh to the, uh, to the round table. But I, I don't really think that's proper. I really want to get this show on the road. And I, I did vote for the recent motion a few minutes ago for general government to take up the, the mayor's invitation. I hadn't thought of that. I think that's a really good idea so that the council can make sure that that meeting's really going to happen. And with that, I'm satisfied, and I, I really think we need to get the show on the road and uh, confirm Mr. Ewing. Any further, Councilor Herzog. Thank you, Mr. President. If I could direct a question to uh, Councilor Vogel. Mm -hmm. um, could you just share with me so I can understand what you intend to accomplish between now and July 14th? Councilor Vogel? I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, thank you. Uh, may I direct Councillor? Yes. Directly? Thank you. Um, as a as a just a little bit of a point of clarification, I, the effort was made earlier on um, through the first discussions to try to have this another meeting with to clarify exactly what's next. Where what is the NRA intending on doing? Where how are the, what 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 are the steps? What are the concerns? We've mentioned a number of them. The mayor pointed them out. The DEP issue, the funding issues, maintenance issues afterwards. Um, parking, you know, where are we going to parking garage? We've discussed those things. I threw them out earlier. So my intent, the intent is to have that round table that we did not have. And just so that we understand everybody's ideas. We understand what the, what the steps should be, what, what we can do now, what we can't do now, what's coming, what has to be done later, just to put all the, everything on, on paper that needs to be looked at with regard to the NRA, the waterfront, et cetera, et cetera. I'd like an answer to the question, what's happening with the waterfront? And right now, that answer is, I don't know. May I say one other comment? Thank you. to. Uh, Council Eigerman for his help with this as well, and I appreciate our earlier discussions. Um, and I thank you all. And again, if, it, if we can postpone it, great. If not, I understand. The intent is simply to pull this all together and to keep the dialogue open and going. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Council Junto. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I also rise in support of. Uh, Councillor Vogel's motion. I would love to see us uh, collectively get together, set a path, put a little clarity to what's happening with the waterfront before we move on with any more appointments. 
Further discussion? Councilor Tonka. President, I rise in uh, opposition. Uh, I still uh, like and, uh, I think uh, in, I, I would like to see Mr. Ulick participate as a full member in that July meeting. He has considerable expertise uh, in landscape architecture, and I think his voice would be an informed one and a useful one. Uh, and so I, I would like him to participate, and I'd like him to be on board. Any further discussion? <coughs> so the motion is to postpone Post, to, postpone to July 14, 2014. Roll call. Councilor Cameron? No. Councilor Connell? No. Councilor Cronin? Yes. Councilor Eigerman? No. Councilor Junta? Yes. Councilor Harquist? No. Councilor Hirsog? Yes. Councilor Kinsey? No. Councilor Tonta? No. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Council President O'Brien? Yes. Six no's, um, motion fails. Needing a simple majority. I understand. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Councilor Cronin? No. Councilor Eigerman? Yes. Councilor Junta? No. Councilor Harquist? Yes. Councilor Hirsog? Yes. Councilor Kinsey? Yes. Councilor Tonta? Yes. Councilor Vogel? No. Council President O'Brien? No. Seven needing a simple majority for appointment passes. Move on to appointment second reading. Judy Avery, 54 Milk Street to the Cultural Council, June 1st, 2017. And there's one reappointment, Katie Gildner, 7 Broad Street, Unit 2, Mosley Woods Commission, January 1st, 2017. Taken collectively. Motion, please. Motion will approve. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Appointments. Collectively. Collectively, yes. Collectively. Appointments 2 and 3, Avery and Gildner, Council Cameron. Yes. Councilor Connell? Yes. Councilor Cronin? Yes. Councilor Eigerman? Yes. Councilor Junta? Yes. Councilor Harquist? Yes. Councilor Hearsog? Yes. Councilor Kinsey? Yes. Councilor Tonta? Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Bryan? Yes. Move on to orders. First order is table community preservation recommendation. I'm sure you don't wish me to read it, Mr. President. It is just that. It's been tabled from the last meeting. We CPA need to remove from the table. Motion to remove from the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Need another motion? Motion to approve. Second. 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 Discussion? Second. What are we doing by individually or council candidate? Um, Thank you, Mr. President. I, I would like to um, <coughs> approve these individually. There's one item which I'm going to recuse myself of, uh, not because of a conflict necessarily, but the appearance of a, of a conflict uh, with the Affordable Housing Trust. Well, the first one is uh, open space reserves. Open space recommendation is $50,000. Correct? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. No. Project two is, did we approve that already? Well, uh, I'm project four here. I'm just going. To. Okay, project two I got, my mistake. YWCA Women's Residence Roof Replacement. Motion to approve. $54,000. Motion to approve. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number three, Belleville Church Restoration Historic Resource, $15,000. Motion approved. Second. Second. Discussion? I just have one, one question that I had five or six residents. If you could explain the difference between uh, church and state, why the church got it and give them state money, that's, I know the reason, but I want to hear from you, so. But that's what a lot of requests from my constituents. I said, um, Vice Chair of the CPC, um, as, as uh, we've had this issue mm -hmm. before us uh, many times before uh, over the years, and uh, it is uh, by both federal law and regulation and uh, state law, uh, also including uh, CPA grants, that uh, the fact that a structure happens to house a church does not disqualify it from receiving this type of grant. Um, the, I know the CPC has always looked at this as uh, the structure being an element of our built environment and when those elements are historic and important to the landscape, the built landscape that we have, uh, we hear those requests for preservation monies, evaluate their need just as we would do any other building, and if the funds we feel go to the historic preservation and not to support the uh, beliefs of the uh, congregations using the structure. Uh, that being said, we believe that over the years uh, these congregations have been motivated by the opportunity for some additional monies to engage more actively in their own fundraising to preserve the uh, important structures that they have. Thank you, Mike. Excellent. Thank you. Further discussion? Oh, Council Clark? Yes, I, <clears throat> I felt conflicted about that perception of conflict between uh, spending public funds on uh, structures that were primarily erected for the purposes of uh, providing an opportunity for a certain set of beliefs to be espoused by a congregation. Uh, I, I still feel conflicted about that, but I have been persuaded, and this is somewhat of a reversal of position I've taken in the past, that the historic fabric of our community um, is actually well represented, uh, including the, these structures, um, that the, his, the celebration of the historic role that these structures have played um, for hundreds of years in this community is worth celebrating and uh, worthy of our support with CPC funding. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number four, Clipper City Rail Trail, open space, $115,000. Motion approved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number five, down payment assistant, assistance, community housing, $75,000. Motion approved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Affordable housing trust. Motion to approve. I'm going to recuse second. myself. Good night, everybody. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Don't go too far. <laughs> no. so Any cool. discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Passes. Have a nice walk. Good. Oh, it's beautiful out there. <laughs> so cool. Thank you. Thank you for the weather update. Thank you. Number seven, In Street Fountain, historic resource, $50,000. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number eight, Green Street Trees. Motion to approve. Second. Historic resource, $21,000. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? FRS steeple restoration, historic resource, $200,000. Move to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Number 10, NHS Exterior Woodwork, Historic Resource, $100,000. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number 11, just, Atkinson just in Common. Yes. Excuse me. I'm going to recuse myself. I'm a member of the Belleville Improvement Society. Oh. Wait. Atkinson Common Tree Restoration, $15,000, historic resource. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Got it. Golly. Charlie. <laughs> How's the weather? <laughs> the weather changed? Any updates? <laughs> Any changes? 12, anymore? City Hall bond debt payment. Uh, $189,187.50. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number 13, open space debt. Open space, $119,000. $818.76. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Administrative cost, administrative expenses, $12,000. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's the end of the community preservation. Mm -hmm. Order number two, amended order column street. Motion to refer to planning and development. Second, second. Discussion? We, we will take this up when we get to committee items. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Order number three. Um, motion to refer to the first. Oh, sorry. Now that the loan order duly adopted by the City Council on August 13, 2012, appropriating $38,818,204 for the purpose of paying costs of designing, constructing, furnishing, and commissioning a new Bresnahan model school, be hereby amended to allow for the borrowing and expenditure of funds not otherwise needed for the Bresnahan project for the construction of a new baseball field behind the Knock Molen Upper Elementary School and for the rehabilitation of the Fuller Field Athletic Facilities. Submitted Councilor Larry G. Junta. Uh, motion to refer three and four collectively. Two. Three. We haven't read four yet, so we just three and four. Yeah, yeah well, re um, refer to um, General Government and Committee of the Whole. Second. Thank you. Discussion? <coughs> Councilor Junta. Um, as a member of the school building committee, it's always nice to be able to come here and say that we have a $3 million surplus. Um, the idea behind this is to repurpose money. So uh, there's, there's $3 million that has not been spent. Uh, we'd like to take a million of that and refurbish the fields that support these schools, the um, fields behind the Knock Molen and Fuller Field, which certainly needs some attention if anybody's <coughs> had the opportunity to go down here. So it's a unique opportunity to take this money and, and put it towards those two different athletic complexes and really finish off the schools and the, those fields that support them. Um, this is going to have to go through an election cycle, so the, the citizens of Newburyport will have a chance to go out and vote on whether this is something that they want to do. Um, but I urge the council to allow them to have that chance. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I will go to order four. Resolution and order pursuant to 5921C, this blank day of 2014, that the city of New Report pursuant to 5921CA shall seek voter approval at the next special election on blank date to assess taxes in excess of the amount allowed pursuant to 5921C for the payment of principal and interest on bonds, notes, certificates of indebtedness issued by the city of New Report to pay costs for constructing a new baseball field behind the Knock Molen Upper Elementary School and rehabilitating the athletic fields at the Fuller Field, including the payment of all costs incidental thereto. To that end, the city clerk is hereby directed to place the following question on the ballot. 
Shall the city of Newburyport be allowed to exempt <coughs> from the provisions of Proposition 2 and one half so-called the amounts required to pay for the bonds issued in order to pay cost of constructing a new baseball field behind the Knockmolen Upper Elementary School and rehabilitating the athletic fields at Fuller Field, including the payment of all costs submitted. Councilor Junto. Motion to refer to general government and the committee of the whole. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Move on to ordinances. Second reading, ordinance number one, yep. section 13-136, stop intersections, add Russell Terrace extension on the southerly side at the intersection of Russell Terrace, submitted, Council of Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Connell. Yes. Councilor Cronin. Yes. Councilor Eigerman. Yes. Councilor Junta. Yes. Councilor Harquist. Yes. Councilor Hirsog. Yes. Councilor Kinsey. Yes. Councilor Tontar. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor O'Brien. Yes. Excuse me, Mr. President, who's the second on that? Councilor Cameron. Thank you. Ordinance number two. 13 179. Handicap parking states as follows, um, add one space at 70 Lime Street until the date certain, June 30th, 2016, submitted Councilor Eigenman. Motion to refer to public safety. Second. Discussion? Councilor Eigenman? Uh, yes, uh, this is not ready for prime time yet. Uh, we got an inquiry from a, a resident and uh, need to work out the details in public safety. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? That's it for ordinances. We had some budget hearings the past two weeks, and certain things have come up during those budget hearings, which included uh, uh, something on some, some personnel. So I would like to entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss these issues. And we will be coming back from after the executive session to the regular agenda will go on to committee items and the, and the budget. I, I, would, I think it would be pertinent to discuss these issues in executive session. I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Connell. Yes. Councilor Cronin. Yes. Councilor Argument. Yes. Councilor Junta. Yes. Councilor Harquist. Yes. Councilor Hirsog. Yes. Councilor Kinsey? Yes. Councilor Tontar? Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Bryan? Yes. So we're going to executive session. Everyone will have to leave the uh, city council chambers. The mayor can ask who she wants to be here. And we'll go on and Gaff can on seat, shut off the cameras. We'll, we'll be back in session, yes. Councilor Cameron, number eight. Councilor Kinsey, number nine. Councilor Tontown, number 11. Councilor Cronin, number 12. Councilor Argument, number one. Councilor Vogel, number two. Councilor Connell, number three. Marcus, number four. Herzog on five. to committee items. Joint education. Nothing, sir. Why don't you make the announcement now? Oh, okay. We're waiting. Thank I you. will, Thank yes. I uh, got word that uh, the high school girls won. Oh, All right. Came back 63 deficit at the half. They won 11 to 9 D2 state semifinals over Norwell. Yay. Congratulations, Catherine Batchelder, coach. <laughs> People that don't follow athletics, that's girls lacrosse. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did I say? Wondering. Girls lacrosse? Did you want to say about what we were talking about? <laughs> Congratulations. There are okay, the uh, other competitors who won the license and permits. Okay. 
Anything from license and permits coming out? Sorry, nothing at this time. Thank you very much. Neighborhood and city services? Nothing at this time. Planning and development? Mr. Uh, President, motion to remove the Collins Street order from committee. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Go ahead. Mr. President, motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Go ahead. Mr. President, thank you. Um, budget and, excuse me, I've done that before. Planning and development. You changed committee, sir. I know. I, okay. I'm starting to realize that I'm halfway through this year. Good. Um, Planning and Development had a public hearing earlier tonight on, on uh, Collins Street. This basically um, has been in committee for a month and a half. We had met um, in committee earlier, had several questions, and um, this was revised by the Planning Director. Um, basically, we would be, um, we're, we're advocating, we did vote three to, three to zero on this. You have the language before you. Um, there have been some uh, scriveners um, corrections basically with the uh, parentheses have been uh, taken out of, uh, of what we're um, voting on. Um, but this would discontinue a portion of Collins Street, which is between two um, parcels. Um, at some point, uh, Collins Street was going to extend all the way to High Street. Um, that was not practical. Uh, in the 50s, there was a house built, I believe, on the High Street end of um, of that way, and uh, so it would never have been feasible to extend Collins Street. Um, because there's a purchase and sale in process, this was raised by the, the owner of the two properties, and we voted three to, three to zero for the language that's here um, that's been vetted by uh, our planning department, <coughs> and I believe also Copeland and Page might have taken a look at this. And uh, essentially, it would just discontinue a very small bit of the street, which uh, has been a driveway for many years, and um, really should, there's no reason for the city to hold on to it. Any further discussion? Councilor Tonto. Yeah, I, I would just note that uh, DPS and the fire department and the police department uh, have all looked at it and said there is no public use for it. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. So motion approved, Collins Street, order number two. This is the order that was <coughs> substituted today, correct? Correct. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Connell? Yes. Councilor Cronin? Yes. Councilor Eigerman? Yes. Councilor Junta? Yes. Councilor Hartquist? Yes. Councilor Hirsog? Yes. Councilor Kinsey? Yes. Councilor Tontar? Yes. Council Vogel? Yes. Councilor O'Brien? Yes. Anything else? Uh, nothing else to report um, other than we will have a joint public hearing with the planning board on items five through nine, and that's been scheduled for July 2nd. Um, we'll send a reminder out about those. Thank you. Thank you. Public safety. What's going on? Um, just, just a quick update. Um, we have a uh, road and sidewalk update in committee. Um, it's really there's no action going to be taken by um, public safety. It, it all stemmed, if, if you remember, um, from curb cuts and ADA accessibility. Um, <coughs> At this point, DPS is creating some standards uh, for construction in, in the city for either brick, brick paver, and concrete um, ADA accessible ramps, depending on the area. Um, they also, we have also walked away from the mass dot um, experience with curb cuts on High Street, so that's off the table. So that's pretty much the update. There's really nothing more here. Um, if, if you would indulge that we just uh, take that out of committee to receive and file, there's nothing more to really be said on it. So Second. I move to do that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to receive and file. <clears throat> so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anything else? Nothing, nothing else. Public utilities? Um, yes, sir. Yes, Mr. President, just a general announcement. Um, I had previously uh, recorded a, um, a committee meeting on Thursday that has since been postponed to a date to be determined. At some point in July, the committee will be meeting to go over both the stormwater regs and uh, fluoridation. Okay. That's it? That's it for now. Thank, Thank you. you. Budget and finance. I would like to uh, move item number three, fiscal year 2015 budget order. 
Out of uh, do we have to? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I would also entertain a motion to take the budget out of committee. You're taking the order out, but not the budget. So moved. Second. We'll discuss the budget. We've got to take it out of committee. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? Okay. Now we can discuss the budget. You want to do it, Council? You want me to do it? It's up to you. I'd be happy to do it. Okay. Well, no, that's the wrong term. But. Body seven, I think. We start on page one. Forty-seven. Uh, we 47. start with the mayor's office, page 47. You want me to do it or are you going to do it? So do you go line by line or do you want me to just go by personnel services? Any question on personnel services? Got it. Thank you. Purchase service, go at that and we can whip through this and be out of here in a half hour. So any questions on personal services in the mayor's office? Purchases of services. Council Herzog. Thank you. Um, I move to regarding uh, line item 53006 for a grant writer. I move to cut that down to 14,100. That's cutting it to 14,100. A second? I'm 39. I'll, I'll second it for discussion. So discussion. Councilor Herzog. Thank you, Councilor. Um, this is a uh, line item for $39,000 uh, for a grant writer. I am, uh, given that the city, given that the city uh, has already received, uh, going back to page uh, 28, uh, we've already received uh, some $8 million in change in grants in uh, this fiscal year alone. I'm skeptical what a uh, $39,000 employee can do beyond what has already been done. The number 14,100, Councillor, is coming from the proposed line item um, from last year's fiscal budget. It was proposed to hire someone at 14,100. That motion failed 8 to 2. I'm suggesting tonight we uh, if it's a will of the council to reduce it from 39,000 down to last year's proposed number of 14,100. And what, how many hours? Any idea you're talking about? I do not know. I will leave that to the mayor's office to determine. Uh, any other discussion on that? Excuse me, do we vote on this? Yes. Um, so all those in favor of the cut to $14,100? Aye. All those? Aye. All those opposed? No. 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 Noes have it. Uh, other charges and expenses? Uh, general administration, personal services, purchase of services, supplies, other charges and expenses, legal, city Clerk, as amended, I believe you all received um, the amendment. There was an increase, ten thousand dollars. In the, um, you'll notice the personnel summary increased by one quarter. In the original uh, book we received, uh, that did not show in the uh, budget item. That has been corrected. Personal services. 
Purchase of services. City Council. Personal services. Purchase of services. Parking clerk. Personal services. Purchase of services. Supplies. Board of registrars. Personal services. Other charges. <clears throat> Information technology. Personal services. Purchase of services. I think uh, for a point of clarification, I would note that um, there is an IT help desk uh, person who receives approximately a $27,000 a year stipend. Uh, and that is a purchase of service, it's a contract. Uh, and I understand that comes out of line 52404, which is um, hardware maintenance. And that's approximately how much, Councilor? Please. That's approximately how much of that $40,000? Uh, 27. I can get it if you want. It's <clears throat> right here, Chad. Yeah, you got it. $27,750. So who benefits from that? Is, is that when the public can't get through our system, they go to this? Or is it for department heads and departments when they have a public list? I don't have the answer to that. I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I'm sorry to we believe, but I missed the, that night of the hearings. Help us? Do we? Oh, Mark. Uh, it's a part time help. It's actually spread out between the enterprise funds and the IT firm. Basically, it does all that top support throughout the city. Helps me. For city employees who use the? Inside our own network, yeah. Inside. So, so it's an inside, it's not an outside. Yeah, it's a <coughs> We've uh, grown out the IT section, but. Uh, yeah. Councilor Junta? Just a general question. Why are they put into hardware maintenance instead of their own line item? Yeah, it could be split out on its own line item, but that's just for a game. Okay. Might recommend that in the future. Supplies? Other charges? Finance, uh, auditors, department, personal services, purchase of services, supplies, other charges and expenses. Assessors department, personal services, purchase of services, Supplies. <coughs> Treasurer's Department. Personal services. Purchase of services. Supplies. Other charges and expenses. Emergency management. Personal services, Councilor Herzog. Thank you, Councilor Chantar. Just as a point of clarification, if I could direct this question to um, the Mayor's office. Earlier tonight, we approved a $400 transfer to the Deputy Coordinator. Um, so I'm just wondering whether the $3,000 should be, I'm just wondering about that line item, given tonight's transfer. Sure, so the extra $400 that was required for that land item for this year was, I believe, due to extra time that that individual spent dealing with uh, managing the insurance claims from the damage that the property suffered earlier this year. Thank you. Purchase of services, supplies, other charges. That's a union position, Peter. 
fire department, personal services. Yes, I move uh, a reduction in line item. 51150, administrative assistant, a reduction to $56,547. Uh, Was that amount again? 56547, 35 fortieths of the position as it's currently funded. 56540. 557. Hmm? 547. It's currently budgeted here at 61626. How'd you come up with that? Is there a second? We approved a 35 hour position. A second? Second. Thank you. <coughs> if I may. Wow. We originally approved $44,000 for a 35 hour a week position. <clears throat> now, a wonderful individual showed up and was selected by the chief. Uh, because of that individual's um, seniority and uh, the uh, fact that it was that position was probably appropriately placed in a different category um, The rate at which that individual was going to be compensated rose It also rose beyond 35 hours to 40 hours um, We were not consulted about the change from 44 to 61 thousand dollars and my reasoning is that um, I, I understand how they got the salary uh, level uh, but without consultation, I think that that is um, a reach from, from uh, the administration side that is unsupportable. Had the administration come and asked for an additional appropriation, um, I think that was something that would have been appropriate we might have considered. Without that, I think the position at the very least should be returned to the hours of service that were originally proposed, and that's how I came up with that particular salary number. So Further discussion? <coughs> Mr. Chair, um, I'd ask the chief if um, are the increase in hours, or have there been additional duties from, from when we originally appropriated that 44,000? And at 35 hours, you hired somebody in at 56 for 35 hours, and then this proposal is to increase to 40 hours. I mean, is, is this job doing more than it was doing originally? Has the job description changed? I can see, Council, that this changed over time, and uh, the position was crafted before I was hired. And then uh, during the hiring process, I was asked my opinion on the administrative assistant. Once in the office of chief, um, the workload on that side of the house, uh, just due to the, the lack of work that had been done before, um, was a very chaotic situation. I asked the city to make it a 40 hour a week position because I believe it warranted that uh, because of the employee of the person that was selected her tenure uh, in the city. Uh, that's how that uh, salary came about at 40 hours. Uh, it is my recommendation that it remain a 40 hour uh, position. Um, but I certainly understand the council's angst, uh, but it was certainly nothing that was done uh, with any intent or malice. So this salary, 61, 62, that's what she was getting, that's what the person was getting in her previous job? Title? Do we know that? We don't know what she was being paid in the previous position? Does that work? No, I have what she was being paid. Um, it's, it's a little bit, um, she's confused about the fiscal year um, 2013, she actually made more than what she was making for the fire chief now. She was working for DPS in a 40-hour-a-week position. It was also a position which gave overtime mm. in addition to the 40 hours because she dispatched with snow and ice days. So in fiscal year 213, she actually made 64179000 dollars Fiscal year 14, she made 6236, dollars And then this year, we're proposing the 61626. dollars as, as a base. But Council Hawkwist, go ahead. Order. Is there opportunity for her to work overtime? She does not. She has not worked overtime since she's worked for the chief. No. I mean, is she expected to work overtime, or is this just? No. It, 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 it's hourly. 
Go ahead. It's an hourly position or is it salary? It's a salary position. It's salary. She's in a salary position now. Her offer letter says it's a salary position. So if she works 50 hours, she's still getting paid for whatever the base hourly exactly. uh, base hours. Well, yeah. well she had, it's hard to say because she hasn't worked it. I think it was like a, a huge thing. Um, in other cases, we do consider it. Well, I mean, my understanding of you know exempt versus non-exempt. If you're if you're salaried exempt from overtime, then you don't get you don't get paid overtime if you work overtime. Mm -hmm. I know we do have some funny cases in this city with the fire department, the police department, and the Teamsters admin, which are all salaried positions, which all get paid overtime. So they're kind of in both okay. both things per their contract. Again, I think that's beside the point. It's not the individual. It's not what the individual worked at uh, in a previous position and the salary that that individual received at that point. It's not about something aspirational. It's about what the mayor asked us to fund and what dollar figure was attached to that. Now, I understand it was the best uh, estimate that was available at that time. But I think that there was so much that changed here that that is improper for the administration to make a change unilaterally without coming back to the council for authorization. I don't often stand and hack away at the budget, but the circumstances of this particular inflation of a salary that we had approved is, in my mind, um, fall so far outside the norm and so far outside my experience on the council that it's unacceptable. Councilor Crown? Yeah, my, um, my biggest two concerns with this is, is, is one that's be being eloquently voiced by uh, Councilor Connell, um, which is what we did approve, and I remember we approved it with, I'd say, at least vigorous discussion. My concern, however, is because of the way this budget is now set up, that we may cut out of, the, out of that line item. And since all personnel services are bundled, mm -hmm. that, it, that, that cut isn't achieved in that line item. Now, that, that concerns me greatly because I, I agree with you. Um, so I don't. You know, I, I like to send a clear message that if we do cut this, it is in that line item. And I don't know if we can do that. And look, if the mayor then, partway through this year, says, I'd really like to bounce this to 40, come make the case. But that case was not made to the council. The case was made for 35 hours a week at a particular salary level. And I understand when you find the right person uh, you want to make sure you're able to secure the services of that person. Okay? If that's the way that the, the position changed over time, come back to council and make the case. That didn't happen. Chief, you want to comment? I would just like to assure the council, that although I'm uh, very concerned with the message this will send to a 25 years for the employee, uh, the intent of the council will be followed. Thank you, Chief. Yep. And, and Chief, this is not a criticism of you. I understand that there are a lot of moving parts here, and, and um, so the failure was I, not yours. I understand the concern of the council, especially councilors who, who were presented with that, but um, you, know, you just said the category of personal services uh, has, uh, is bundled, right? And the city decided to do that. Um, the, the council agreed to do that. Um, I, I'm not privy to the reasoning, but it seems to me that um, there is a value to giving a department head some flexibility uh, to, to move. When I was a department head, I always moved money from one item to another. I mean, I didn't you know, face the city council, but I mean, it's fairly common. Right? Uh, I just attended the uh, state budget workshops for, for new budget and finance um, committee members. And uh, other councilors are, are given a one line item uh, in other cities on, uh, by department, not even broken down by personnel and purchase of services. Uh, now I understand, uh, I, I think actually our budget culture here is better, all right? Uh, although I think it is a, 
a somewhat of an open question uh, as to you know, how much flexibility we anticipate department heads to have in, in making decisions as to where to, to best um, allocate the funds that are bundled. So I, I'm a little torn on this one. I understand that. Councilor Eigerman. I, I, I think, uh, Chair Tonsar, you're raising a good point, but the point is we, didn't, we don't have that policy in place yet. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm green and new to this council, but I have to defer to the more senior members that given the history of how this line item came, I feel I really have no choice but to support the motion because of the precedent it would set until we adopt the policy change that you're suggesting if we choose to do that. Mm. I would also speak in favor of, of it as well. Again, it's not, it's not anything personal with the individual involved, but there's, there's, there's more involved than just the salary. I mean, you've got you know, the benefits, you've got taxes, insurance, you know, you've got all the, the aggregate cost of a salary is, not, is more than just this item. So it, it speaks to the counselor's point is that you know, this isn't what we agreed to. I just want to let you, uh, this position here in the police department, because of what happened here, the secretary in the police department, the best of my knowledge, is going to get a 40 hour week and get a raise also. So if you do it for one, I don't know if you want to do it for the other. So that's something to consider before you make your final decision here. This also would, I would think, have to impact the police department secretary. Well, just a point of information. Uh, just, just a clarification for Councilor Eigenman. Um, transfers that we do now uh, from uh, outside the, the, the item. So for instance, we'll do a transfer from one department to another, mm -hmm. all right, but, we, but not you know, within these item classes. And the council agreed to that. Uh, I'm, I'm not suggesting, by the way, that, that we receive a, uh, just one item per department. Uh, I, would, I, would, I think we do it much better. Uh, I just raise the question as to whether or not our anticipation going forward uh, is that department heads should have some flexibility within their lines. Because they can transfer and we never see it. And we've agreed to that. This council has agreed to that. Move the question. So second. Moving the question. Second. All in favor of moving the question? Aye. 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 Opposed? All in favor of the uh, motion, which is to reduce uh, line item 51150 from $61,626 to 56,547. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Three no's. Three no. Purchase of services. Supplies. Other charges and expenses. Capital outlay. Police Department, Personal Services. Council of Con. <laughs> I'm not ready with the calculation. You didn't do the <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Police Department, Personal Services. Do the same thing, right? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, let me just stop here. We just did it to the fire department. If you can leave this one alone, you've got to go back and give the other one. You've got to take another vote, I would think. I mean, it's just not fair. I mean, I think this person got the, job, got the raise because of what the fire department, because they, they're similar duties for the chief and the marshal. That's my opinion. If you count well, one, that's the marshal. Is, that, is that the case, do you think? The subject came up because of the increase at the fire department right. with the 40 hours. Uh, right. Because the classification of the union, right. the police department followed suit. Right. OK. 
Very clear. So, yes. If I may ask, Marshall, so this position went from 35 to 40 hours as well? Yes. Yes, it did. That's why you said when we were discussing the fire department, it's going no, to impact the police. Just a moment then. We could just take a moment. You, you get the calculation. That's what I'm doing. No, that can't be right. Yes. Just a point of clarity. Um, is it typical to come to the council when job descriptions are moved? You know, from 35 to 40 hours, is that, a, I mean, is that our business? Well, I think we funded 44,000. They, they went way above that, so that's, 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 that's what, a concern. Okay. That was a concern to me and a lot of, peop to a lot of people. The, the concern fire. going above the 44,000. Gotcha. Okay. So. I got lost there for a minute. Nothing against the person. The person very well yeah, qualified. I don't even know who yeah. it is, but yeah. Great people do, do good work. Um, I gotcha. I would move reducing line item. 51, 144, no, I'm wrong. You're wrong. 51, 150, which is now 59, 6, 27, 36, 2. 52,173, 62. By my calculations, that's 35 fortieths of the line item that's before So this us. is line item 51150? That's correct. And what's your calculation again, please? 52, 173, 62. 52, 173, 52? 62. 62. 62. And he calls it 35 40th. I think that's an important point. Discussion? Second. You just need a second. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Call for a vote if there's no further discussion. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Renounce. Passed. Police Department purchase services. Supplies. Other charges. Capital outlay. Health Department. Personal services. Purchase of services. Supplies. Other charges and expenses. Animal control. Personal services. Purchase of services. Supplies. Other charges and expenses. Sustainability, personal services, purchase services, supplies, other charges and expenses. DPS highway, personal services, purchase services, supplies, Capital outlay. Snow and ice. Personal services. Purchase services. Yep. Um, okay. Go ahead. Parks. Personal services. Purchase of services. Supplies, planning and development, personal services, purchase of services, supplies, capital outlay, licensing commission. Personal services, 
other charges and expenses. Conservation Commission, personal services. Historical Commission, personal services. Planning Board, personal services. Zoning Board of Appeals, personal services. Building Department, personal services. Purchase of services. Commission on Disabilities, personal services. Councilor um, Herzog. Thank you, Councilor. Can I just ask um, whoever the right person is, why this position has not been funded in prior years? Did you? It was it came out of other office. I, yeah. I can't tell you why it wasn't funded, but uh, may have recognized that it's an important position, needs to be accounted for in the general funded. It's been cobbled together over the years from various accounts. And uh, the ADA revolving account being one, and that's uh, been drawn down to just about $1,000. Council Herzog? Okay, so as a follow up then, um, and again, this is not about individuals, but according to a uh, payroll sheet that was distributed to the members uh, in the council previously, um, the individual who is proposed to be paid $2,640 as ADA coordinator, if I'm understanding this, would only be for about one to two hours a week, um, given other job responsibilities that this person has, the total 34 hours a week. Therefore, I'm confused why either one, we're paying the same person, or two, whether this person needs a salary for this at all. Just looking for some clarification. Uh -huh. I don't quite understand the question. Um, I can, if you'd like me to. Yeah, um, if you could. According to the sheet you've passed out previously, um, Excuse me, uh, Councilor Herzog, what's the name of the sheet? This what's is uh, Payroll Multiple Sources and Regular 1099 Vendors. Thank you. With the ABCD columns. Um, uh, the individual uh, indicated on this sheet as ADA coordinator, uh, this is a, a stipend salary for $2,640. Um, he he currently works in the building department as an assistant building inspector, uh, currently at 19 hours a week, proposed in fiscal year 15 at 22 hours a week. Additionally, he is proposed to be a new uh, CDBG coordinator, proposed at 12 hours a week. When I add up that 12 hours a week to the 22 hours a week, I'm concerned that he may not have enough hours to be ADA coordinator at $2,640. That's my question. It's actually going to be 23 hours a week in the building department and 12 doing housing rehab. So that's a 35 hour work week. He's going to be paid the ADA stipend for work he does outside of that 35 hours, including attending the uh, Commission on Disabilities meetings, which he's been doing uh, on a monthly basis. And he'll continue to give them the support they need as a commission. And it's outside of the 35 hour work week, which he's proposed to have for the next year. We're definitely getting our bang for our buck. This guy's yeah. definitely working longer than 35 hours, so. I think it's about the individual. I'm just concerned that ADA is not being given enough hours. That's my question. Sure. I think he's done quite a bit in ADA in the past few months. <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah, if you don't mind. He's actually gone through a statewide training program that he went with the chair of the Commission on Debil Disabilities to, yeah. uh, and he's actively working on a number of different cases um, with the commission. The commission, for the first time, has funding in the budget this year to do more education, more outreach uh, to the business community, to the residents uh, about the programs that are in place, and, and his work uh, in advocating for that funding has certainly uh, been indicative of, of why it's included in the budget this year. Thank you. Council on Aging, personal services, purchase of services, supplies. 
library, personal services, purchase of services, youth, youth services, personal services, purchase of services, other charges and expenses. Veteran services, personal services, purchase of services, other charges and expenses. Education, Newburyport Public Schools, school expenses. Whittier Regional Technical High School. Human Resources and Employee Benefits. Human Resource Department, okay. page 188. Okay. Personal Services. Councilor Cronin. Yeah, I'd uh, move to reduce uh, the proposed number um, to 64, 948, 11. What number? Is there a second? Are you talking about line 51101? Mm-hmm. What I'll second for discussion. Councilor Crown. Yeah, um, during budget uh, sessions, um, this um, position was uh, requested to be um, increased to the uh, 40 hours a week um, level from 35. Um, this position has only been in existence for about a year. Um, it's a management position. Um, and as a manager, you work until uh, the job is, is done. Um, I, just, I just think it's bad precedent to um, start um, almost a 15% increase in, in management position um, when we're really trying to hold the line on um, um, unions, on uh, admin administrative assistance, um, on other clerks, that this should that um, we should be setting an example here. Um, the reason I went to 64 is to um, at least provide uh, a raise of, of some ilk. Um, in in the uh, process, but um, to to jump up to that, I think is um, not appropriate at this time. Councilor Connell, as I calculate that, Councilor Cronin, that's a two point five percent increase. Is what you're pro proposing? Thereabouts. Just to be clear about what it is. Yeah. The, does the chairman? Um, Generally, what's the range of increases for department heads in this budget? I haven't calculated some of the others, but I, are they in the 2.4? One, one and a half, one and a half. Say again. 1.5. 1. 1. Hmm. Council Hardquist. Um, sorry, I wasn't here during the budget um, meeting. So last year's Salary at 63,360 was 35 hours or 40? Just for clarification. 35. 35? 35. 35 so during the budget meeting, it was discussed to raise it to 40 hours yes. at the salary of 73? Yes. OK. Was that 73 with a raise of 1.5? There was some raise in it, but it, but it was the increase in hours. It was 1.5. Yeah. Five hours. hours. Right, right. Council Herzog. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, while I understand uh, where Councilor Cronin is coming from, I 
personally uh, will vote to maintain the proposed salary for the simple reason that the um, recent uh, Charter Review Committee and the ultimate charter that was approved by the legislature created a human resource department. Um, and as a former City Hall employee, I can attest that a human resource department was desperately needed. Um, given that, uh, given the resources that um, uh, the HR director puts into the, uh, puts into the work, I frequently attend meetings upstairs in the auditorium in the evening. She's already there doing work. And um, I think that's a, a testament to um, maintaining the proposal. I have no objection to uh, keeping it. Council Hotquist. I'm sorry, it's a habit of looking over here. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, I will also be um, voting to keep the salary at what's proposed, and it's simply because I know that um, the HR director works above and beyond 35 hours. I would like to bet that she probably works close to 50, 60 since she first started here. So I think it's um, a very fair salary. I know what HR directors make in other cities, and this is low for 40 hours. Uh, Council Cameron. Uh, these days I try to not agree with Councillor Herzog as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> However, this time, no, I, I, I agree with what- This isn't all going to Ainsby, don't worry about it. The <laughs> camera's just too long. This is what I've heard. Um, you know, I, I agree with what, what Councillor Herzog and Councillor Harquist said. Uh, to me, it's not, uh, I, I try to not think about this as a person, but I think about this as a position. It's a position that, that requires more hours 737 employees, if you throw in the school side, and really one person, and I know we're adding this uh, part-time public health nurse to help in on the health side of things. Um, that's, just, that's just a huge, huge workload, so I'd, I'd be supportive of keeping it at the proposal, which includes that 1.5% increase, but the additional five hours. Councilor Kinsey. What he said. <laughs> he just took it. I agree. Further discussion? All those in favor of the motion to decrease line 51101, Human Resources Department, from $73,498.11 to $64,948.11. All in favor? Yes. Yes. All opposed? No. 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 Human Resource Department Purchase of Services. Supplies. Other charges and expenses. Insurance Group. Personal Services. Purchase of Services. Supplies. Retirement Board, Personal Services. Stabilization Outlay. <laughs> debt Service, Debt Service Total. <laughs> Non-excluded Debt Service, Total. DPS, Water Department. Oops. Personal services. Purchase of services. Supplies. Other charges. Capital outlay. Debt service. DPS sewer. Personal services. Purchase of services. Councilor Herzog. Thank you, Councilor. Another, just a, a question. Um, last year, when we reviewed the fiscal 14 budget, there was uh, plenty of discussion, and I believe Councilor Connell had began it. Um, so I'd like to Councilor Connell if you have any thoughts. Um, 
sewer biosolids disposal. Mm -hmm. I remember at the time the city council approved reducing the proposed number by some amount. Um, and I wonder whether uh, given the proposed increase of some $20,000 and change, whether it's worthwhile to um, question decreasing the 264 or just, uh, or just leaving it alone. Which line are you? I'm sorry. It's this would be line item five three zero four zero for yep. bio sure the disposal. Yep. Your recollection is is accurate. Um, part of the advantage of going to the uh, the sludge management system that we have here is that it reduces the amount of water that is going to be hauled away, and we're charged by the ton. And I was persuaded in uh, conversations with the sewer department that until they have a year of experience with the new system and they can really achieve something that is measurable, that this is kind of a backstop. They're not quite sure where they're going to land yet. And I was persuaded to hold off on that at this point. I think there will be savings. You have to. When you're going from a, a filter press, a belt system to uh, the system that we have now, which is auger-based, um, we are going to have some savings. But without being able to put a finger on it right now, I think that it's, it's prudent to leave it where they've proposed it. Fair enough, thank you. Good point. Supplies. Other charges and expenses. Capital outlay. Debt service. Harbor master. Personal services. Purchase of services. Supplies. Other charges and expenses. Capital outlay, debt service. We've already improved the capital improvement program, so we're a, a wrap. Is that it? That's all? That's it. That's it. Okay, we'll take a five minute break to figure out what the final yep, cuts are, and we'll readjourn in five minutes or later. <laughs> I'm going to put Ethan to the test in his new, new job. Charlie? Charlie? Yeah. I'm trying to reconstruct because I put a note right. on the police details for yeah. water and sewer. You know the amounts, the negatives? Fire. Oh, good. I'm broke. Excuse me. But I think you do your best. Right. Turn on your mics. Have a motion for the budget. We know the panel is. Mr. Chairman, yes, go ahead. Move to uh, approve. As amended. Second. As, as, a, do, as amended. As amended. As amended. As amended. Do you have a dollar figure? As amended. What's the final as amount? Read it? Yeah, could you give me the number, Richard, please? I, I, just, I just read the order if it's OK. Go ahead. You, you want the number or the order? The order, which the order. has the number. Fill in the blanks it, as we go along. It says that the general fund budget for the city new report for FY 2015 be approved in the amount of $56,277,194.81 and $25,148,813 of that amount is established as a school department budget. And then for the record, Water Enterprise Fund is 4,887,816.55 sewer is Six million two four hundred two forty seven eight seventy six point six two. Harbor Master is three hundred and fifty seven thousand six eighty three point eighty. And the approved budget represents the budget submitted to the mayor by the mayor on May twelfth, two thousand fourteen, as amended by this council. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion second. 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 Roll call. Motion to approve the budget as amended. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Connell? Yes. Councilor Cronin? Yes. Councilor Argerman? Yes. Councilor Junta? Yes. Councilor Harquist? Yes. Councilor Hirsau? Yes. Councilor Kinsey? Yes. Councilor Tontar? Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Council President O'Brien? Yes. Motion passes. Congratulations. Good to the audit. That was relatively painless. Make a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Moved.
Ja, det er det. Hej. 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 H